In this video, we're going to talk about a huge time-saving technique called a feature mirror. Feature mirrors are located in the part tools section of the modeling toolbar. And as the name might suggest, they mirror complete features. Features are these big entities here, like extrude boss, extrude cut, fillet, chamfer, all of these guys. So it's important to know when you mirror a feature that you're mirroring the feature in its entirety. So for example, if you have a fillet that's targeting multiple faces, you can't just mirror this particular one, right? It's gonna to try to mirror everything that has to do with the feature. So let's jump into it. We're gonna select the mirror tool and we're gonna select our features to mirror. Now we can do this in two ways. We can select them directly from the design explorer. And in our case, our goal is to mirror this groove over. So let's go ahead and select that. And we're gonna do the mirror plane and we're going to select this plane. Now you can select planes, uh, any of the three default planes or any other plane that you make, or you can select any flat face as an input here. But in our case, we're going to select this plane and we're going to press OK. And so now that we see we've gotten most of the groove done, but we still have to do this fillet. So let's try and mirror the fillet now. We'll select it just like we did before, mirror plane, and we see that we get this error. It says the selected operations cannot be patterned alone. And this is gonna happen when you are trying to pattern a fillet or a chamfer by itself. So the solution here is to edit the mirror that we did earlier by right-clicking it. And then we wanna add this fillet onto it so it can be mirrored at the same time as the surrounding geometry. And now we get the fillet output that we expect. The next thing that we'll try to do here is to mirror this hole. And the first thing we'll do is select the hole and then we'll select the mirror plane and we get a good result. So let's press OK. And now we're going to mirror the source hole and the mirror operation itself across this mirror plane and we'll press OK. Now we can see that we finished this part pretty fast with the addition of just a few mirror operations. And the advantage of doing it this way is really easy editing. So if we were to go in here and edit the sketch for the hole, we can change this value in one place to be maybe 0.5. And when we get out of sketch mode, our dog bone is right underneath the object that we edited. So we can either grab it and drag it down, or we can click the generate to last feature button. Now we can see that all of our holes have been updated. So leveraging, mirroring, and patterning makes your life easier as a designer because you have to do less work to create the geometry and you have to do less work to update it. In this next example, we'll demonstrate really quickly how you can use planar faces or flat faces as a mirror plane. So here we've selected just all of the features that we have. And earlier we talked about how you can use planes uh, to be the mirror plane, but here we wanna use this planar face. So let's go ahead and select that. And we can see it works just like we expect, All right? We don't have to use a plane. Uh, we can even select up here and get this kind of interesting result. So just be aware, oftentimes it may be easier to select a planar face than to uh, create or use an existing plane. This next example is a little advanced, but it pays to know how it works just in case you need it. In this example, we have an extrusion and this extrusion wasn't defined with a set depth. Instead, it's defined with a two geometry, which means we're gonna start at the source, which is a circle, and we're gonna extrude this out towards the target, which is in this case, face six. If this face were to update at any point, this extrusion would also update because it's just going to where it hits the face. So how does this act when we try to mirror it? Well, let's go ahead and mirror over this plane. So we have mirror geometry disabled right now, and it's on by default, and 95% of the time you're gonna leave it on. But in this case, we turned it off, and we don't get what we might expect. And that's because instead of mirroring the literal geometry that was a result of this, we've mirrored the recipe to create geometry. So it's kind of like it's made a circle over here, and then it's tried to create another extrude to geometry down, and it's looking for where this face would end up going. So if we were to turn on mirror geometry, we get the result that we would probably more expect. 
You won't run into this very often, but just be aware that in some cases, some features that you have may be a little bit more dynamic, like to geometry. And in some of those cases, if you disable mirror geometry, you can get a little bit different results than you might expect. That rounds up the lesson on feature mirrors. Getting really good at these is gonna save you a ton of time.